All right, howdy folks, welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what I wanted to do is just discuss this paper that I found from the Journal of Bioscience and Bioengineering. Um, I chose this one to talk about because it covers a lot of things that are really important to using our blue LED lights. Um, you know, light bulbs like this one um, with hydrogen peroxide on our comic books to get some really awesome results. So as a reminder, this is the blue LED light. I recommend this thing it irradiates at about 450 to 460 nanometers. And it's the same one that's on the Captain Mike board. Uh, and I think it was Chris Trump on that board that brought this light bulb to our, our attention. And I have a whole separate video on that. But what I wanted to do here is just focus a little bit on the... Um, background and understanding some of the photochemistry of hydrogen peroxide as a function of wavelength and as intensity. And one of the things that I think a lot of people assume is that the mechanism by which we're getting that photo bleaching is by forming hydroxyl radical by the photolysis of hydrogen peroxide. And so if you're, if you're looking for what that looks like, you know, what we're going to do here is to, to get the hydroxyl radical, we would take our hydrogen peroxide and we would radiate that with H uh, nu. So H here is for Planck's constant and the nu is the kind of goofy V which is representative um, of, of the, the wavelength of light and so together that gives you the energy of a photon and it's the, the photon then that goes in to bust that up and then that would generate uh, an OH dot and an OH dot on the other side by directly kind of breaking that hydrogen peroxide bond here. So if we draw this all the way out, you know, we might draw it as two separate electrons and then generating uh, two times OH radical. Okay, and so that's going to be our mechanism of photolysis. Uh, certainly, hydrogen peroxide is susceptible to photolysis, 100% the case, um, but I don't think that that's going to be the case with these blue LEDs. I actually think this is exactly the reason why all of the other experiments I had early on looking at grow lights, black lights, um, shorter wavelength UV lights, I think all of those, the, the, the ones that were particularly high energy that cured nail polish, you know, that I had showed in a prior video, Video. All of those, I think, do this. And I think what's very special about this bulb is it does not do that. Okay, and this paper, I think, has a really easy to understand reason why. And so I chose this one uh, because of it. And I, I've highlighted some things here. So one of which is that the Food and Drug Administration here has concluded that peroxide up to 3% is safe. And so if you've heard me say this before, um, I use 1.5% on most of my work. Um, the Captain Mike book recommends 3%. Um, and I recommend do not, do not use more unless you're diluting it or using it incredibly diffuse over a surface because again you know the overall concentration of peroxide on the surface is going to be dependent not only on the concentration you're adding but also by how much you're, you're putting on there but i recommend using um, 1.5 percent hydrogen peroxide which is the store-bought three percent hydrogen peroxide cut 50 50 with di water um, and the cool thing about this here is they figured out that about a thousand millimolar which is a chemist's description of concentration corresponds to about a three percent so in this study they were actually using um, concentrations of hydrogen peroxide, which were smack on um, what the Captain Mike Stain Removal and Whitening book recommends for most of this work. All right, and they were using those thousand millimolar concentrations um, being irradiated at blue light close to the 400, uh, 405 nanometer. And um, they point out here in the introduction that, uh, you know, the effect of light is a very potent way to photolyze hydrogen peroxide and that the UV light again is wavelengths below 400 nanometers. Okay, and so all of this is kind of background. I covered a lot of that in our prior video here, um, but what I really want to do is point out um, this graph. Yep which I've now over zoomed here a little bit. Um, but this is the light bulbs that they were using. They actually went and studied all of the light. And so here you can see that the 365 nanometer bulb they were using, they used a 385, a 400 nanometer, and then a 465. And the 465, if you look very carefully, has a little bit, just a little itty bitty bit uh, of a shoulder down there at 400. Um, but for the most part, you get these very nice peaks um, and you have very narrow uh, wavelengths of light mm -hmm. on these LEDs. And so I think that that was something I wanted to point out. Um, the 465 is a little bit longer wavelength than, than what we were using, but it's very, very close. Okay, and so this I think is a, a good background because it includes both what other people would have been doing before the stain removal whitening book with black lights or grow lights or, or you know more intense nail polish removing lights as well as something very close to the blue LEDs that we're using here. 
plan. Uh, what the authors did is they used um, this DMPO molecule, and the DMPO molecule can trap a hydroxyl radical and give a readout, and then they were able to determine the concentration of those hydroxyl uh, radicals by shining various light uh, on the mixtures of hydrogen peroxide. And so you can see here, um, that uh, they have did it in varying concentrations, and unsurprisingly, as you increase the amount of hydrogen peroxide present, you get more radicals under the same amount of um, condition, and that's exactly what I put in the other video on kinetics, is you increase the concentration, the rate constant stays the same, but the overall observed rate goes up because you're increasing the concentration and the overall uh, rate, so our rate here, if we remember, is equal to our rate constant K times our hydrogen peroxide uh, radical. And so by increasing the hydrogen peroxide concentration, we're going to increase the rate. And so you're going to end up with more um, stuff at the end of it. And so that, that totally makes sense. As you go from a low concentration to a higher concentration, you get more of a readout. But in each of these independent plots now, we have 360, 385, 400, and 465 nanometers. And what I want to point out is that the 465 nanometer light has essentially no detectable uh, hydroxyl radical. So, uh, you know, in, in that 465 nanometer light, I'll point out, did have this little bit of a shoulder right at 400. And so the excitation of that 400 nanometer bulb goes a little bit lower, um, just a little bit, than, than that 400 shoulder right there uh, on the the 465 bulb. And so this bulb here does cover the 350 or sorry the 450 range. It goes all the way up above 500 um, and it dips a little bit below there. And so the the bulb they used actually covers quite a little uh, quite a broad wavelength, but using that bulb, they have no detectable um, hydroxyl radical um, from photolysis. And I think that that's incredibly important to understanding how our blue LEDs with hydrogen peroxide are different from UV light, but I think it's also important to understanding the chemistry just generally. So I think with a light that's in that 365 range, we're definitely getting that photolysis of hydrogen peroxide. And I think that this is a negative reaction. So I think when this happens on our comic book, it's going to be destructive because uh, these hydroxyl radicals are incredibly reactive. And we can go look up what the half-life of that hydroxyl radical is. So this is right off the Wikipedia page for the hydroxyl radical. And it'll tell you it is an incredibly, incredibly reactive molecule. And it has a half-life in uh, most systems of 10 to the negative 9 seconds. So that's roughly 1 nanosecond. That is, you know, way shorter than the blink of an eye. And so by the time you close your eyes and open it again, all that hydroxyl radical is going to be completely consumed. And because this is such a reactive molecule and because it is such a potent oxidant I think that this is going to be a destructive process on our comic books and I think selectively choosing and utilizing this blue LED bulb is going to be very important to minimizing that photolysis so that the hydrogen peroxide does something else not this photolysis reaction we're going to do something else with it and I'm going to have a whole separate video talking through the other reactions that hydrogen peroxide could be doing on our comic books um, that is not this photolysis reaction but I thought this paper was great because it summed up a lot of things in including showing that the you know these really long wavelength lights don't hit um, the the excitation required for hydroxyl radical formation. All right, so that was the main thing I wanted to get out of this video. Um, you can indeed photolyze hydrogen peroxide. The wavelength is going to be incredibly important to doing it, and at the 465 nanometers, we're getting very minimal photo excitation of that. Uh, hydrogen peroxide to generate the hydroxyl radical. So if you found this useful, helpful, for confusing, whatever, uh, thank you for watching. Please leave the like, share with a friend, subscribe to the video, um, drop a comment, etc., etc. And so thank you for your attention.